everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Feed the Beast Infinity for episode 74. And it has been way too long since the last episode of this came out, but... The good news is that in that time, this pack has updated quite a bit, and we have quite a few new mods and new things added to existing mods, which gives us a bunch of new cool stuff to play around with and to take a look at, really. But uh, what I'd like to start with today is showing you all the stuff I've done since the end of last episode, most of which has taken place over, of course, in the last millennium. Now, I haven't really done enough to quantify the month-long gap, but... I've done a fair bit that's going to, like, warrant showing you what I've done. So, at the end of last episode, we were working on extra cells, incorporating fluids into our AE system, doing auto-crafting with all that kind of stuff. And we set up these tanks over here, where we set up this first tank. And basically, since the end of last episode, I've done exactly what I said I was going to do. I've added two more tanks to the system, so we now have one for Redstone, and we also have one for Mob Essence. Both of these are hooked up to our AE system. I had some issues. I'm not quite sure if something changed since the end of last episode or if I was just doing it wrong last time with the uh, the fluid terminal here I thought this storage bus had to go on the controller but when I came back on the f the resident ender wasn't in my system my AE system wasn't picking it up and then when I added it to this one here the ender tank it started to recognize it so apparently you need to have it on the input and output slot of the ender tank and not on the controller which is exactly what I've done on all of these and that kind of leads me nicely into the next thing or the big thing that I've changed since the end of last episode and that is our AE system you may have noticed back in the overworld there was no longer the AE system our storage drives and the crafting terminals over in the the overworld they're not in that corner anymore uh, where they used to be and that is because I've moved all of my controllers all of my drives and all of my crafting storage Underneath here, now I've got a little elevator block. We don't really need this to be fair, we can just fly around. But basically, I was having a ton of issues with channels. I was trying to get things to work. I couldn't get enough channels for the uh, the last tank over here, and I couldn't get any of these storage buses to work, and it was just all falling apart. So, what I did is I thought I'm just going to completely overhaul our AE system. And that's exactly what I've done since the end of last episode. I made a ton more of these ME controllers, which we now have all around here, each allowing us to have up to 32 channels coming off of them. I've got a ton of P2P networks going on inside this now. Like we have one here that goes around up and across to this stuff here. We then have one connected to this stuff. We have one that goes over to here to all this stuff. We then have one that goes into the overworld because now, of course, our AE system is based in the last millennium, which means all all of our stuff in the overworld, which still needs to have access to our AE system, uh, is now linked in through our quantum ring over here, and it was a massive pain in the backside. And if I have learned one thing, uh, upgrading my AE system, it is that my cable management is abysmal. I, I had to go through and take up like all of the flooring throughout this base. I had to pull all this stuff up. Uh, here's the quantum ring, by the way. I put a nice little glass pane in here so uh, we can see it in action. But I had to tear all of the flooring up, and it was just a complete mess. There were like different kinds of uh, Ender IO cables. There were some thermodynamics cables mixed in with normal applied energistics cables with Ender IO ME cables and dense cables. It was a mess. So I kind of took the whole thing up, relayed almost everything down there to try and make sense of it all. But we now have all of this stuff hooked back up. Uh, everything that is still in here, like this uh, this chest here and our wireless access point, uh, is all still working. Everything in the overworld should still work, I believe. We have all of these. This isn't working, but <laughs> apart from this, every and we're not even using this anymore, to be fair. Our um, uh, all processing system is now all over in the deep dark. But everything that was hooked up to the AE system, all of these things, our um, uh, big reactors over here are currently offline which is not good at all. That says three of eight channels. They were online. And if I look for iron, the iron is online. So that's working. I'm not quite sure why that stopped working. I'll have to take a look uh, again between episodes. But basically, I did a ton of work on applied energistics. I think everything in here was working fine last I checked. Yeah, all this stuff's on. The only things that are currently not working... Uh, well, they're working. The only things that are currently not connected are the A subnetworks over in the Britannia greenhouse and the B greenhouse. These two are still on because they're kind of their own networks, but they're not connected to the main network, so I can't access, like, all of these bees and all of the Britannia flowers using my wireless access terminal yet, but we will fix that at some point in the future. For now, what I want to start working on is something new and kind of cool from Draconic Evolution that's going to go over in the last millennium on this new little, like, island space that I've built up here, 
and that is that uh, Draconic Evolution added portals. Uh, it kind of links in with the Charm of Dislocation we have and the pedestals that we have uh, in the overworld, but it allows you to build big nether portal-like portals uh, of any size, I believe up to 150 by 150 blocks, so massive, massive portals that you can walk through and you can go to wherever the, uh, the Charms of Dislocation would normally take you to. Uh, so I want to have like a really big portal over here at the back here so we can just run in, jump through it, and it takes us back to the overworld instead of having to carry this guy around uh, all the time. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So uh, if we go over to Draconic Evolution, this guy over here, the Draconic Infused che uh, ch Chest, the Draconium Infused Obsidian uh, is the new block that was added. There's also a few more that you might not have seen before, including the Reactor Stabilizer, as well as some of these Flux Gates. These are the ones that I didn't notice uh, or didn't recognize from before. But I'm going to go ahead and make like 23 of those, apparently. Do we have any more blaze? We have 5,190 blaze ones. So I will take just a bunch more of those and make quite a few more of this infused obsidian. Because I want a somewhat big uh, portal here. I don't want it to be massive. I'm not going to go to the 150 by 150 block maximum. But I would like, if possible, to kind of have a big long portal that goes along like this. And then kind of up... I don't know how many I want it to go up. Maybe that many? Maybe one more? And then kind of have it come across. We might have enough here. Actually, yeah, we should have enough here. Uh, if we don't make it any taller than this. And we'll link it up like so. So we're going to have a massive portal that basically allows us to get from uh, here. From Can I crescent hammer this? I cannot. I'm going to have to break it with my draconium pick. <laughs> Oh gosh, this is obsidian, isn't it? It's going to take forever. But it's basically a portal that lets us go here from the last millennium back to the overworld without having to carry this guy around. Um, it's not going to work just yet. It doesn't, you don't, it doesn't form when you just make this shape here. Uh, you do, of course, need a place to put your uh, charm of dislocation. I believe both charms uh, will work, both the normal charms and the enhanced charms of dislocation. But basically, the next thing that we are going to need is this guy over here, the Dislocator Receptacle, which is where you place your Charm of Dislocation or your Advanced Charm of Dislocation. And this thing's pretty hard to make, but for us, it's actually fairly easy because we've got like a ton of stuff here. Uh, we do need another pedestal, which again is fairly easy if we happen to have enough pressure plates lying around, which we do. So we'll go ahead and make one of those. We'll go ahead and make ourselves... One of those. Nice. And then basically all you got to do is you can put this anywhere within the frame of the portal apart from the corners, uh, if I remember correctly. There is a little section about this in the Draconic tablet here. You can see it has to be between 1x1 one one and 150 by 150 da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. The portal can be vertical or horizontal, as is kind of horizontal here. Uh, it has to go somewhere excluding the corners. That's where the receptacle goes. So I'm just going to stick it smack bang in the middle here for symmetry's sake. Hopefully. I can see in Whale we're about halfway there on breaking the subsidian. And we're done. Nice. <laughs> All right. Let's take that down like that. And then if we were to go ahead and just right click with this, it's now in there. You can pull that out again using like item ducts. I don't know. I wonder if I shift right click. Oh, okay. So shift right clicking also works. You can also pull it out with hoppers and item ducts. I had an idea. I wanted to try something out where we had it so that we had like a little button system over here. Maybe like a, a board with some buttons on it. We could click it and it changed which location it took us to. That'd be a bit tricky to set up, but I think it would be possible. And I might look into uh, tr testing that out in a creative world between episodes here. But basically now, if we were to fly through this thing, it works exactly the same as the Charm of Dislocation would. And it should take us to the overworld. Nice. So I've considered having like a few of these. Like I might replace these three over here with maybe some portals in this room. Because our Thorncraft room, or what used to be our Thorncraft room, is kind of just an empty space right now. So uh, I don't really have much use for it. So I might go ahead and throw down some portals in here to all the different places where we can go. Like the end, the nether, uh, and maybe even some to other parts of uh, the base here. Obviously the last millennium. But maybe like the Britannia greenhouse and the, uh, the bee house and all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, that might be a thing that I work on between episodes. The next thing I want to work on in this episode is some of our storage issues. So, uh, if you didn't notice, back in the last millennium, we have got a ton of drive cages right now for all of our stuff back under here. Uh, I think I added, like, a few more take-ups up to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, then this guy here uh, makes it up the eight channels that we could use. So we have a lot of space, actually, for ME drives. We don't really have that much of a storage issue. But uh, you'll notice that in the overworld, the 
barrels that we were using for all of our stuff. And I was about to look for my charm of dislocation there to take us home. Uh, when I realized that it's actually over here. Um, the barrels that we're still using, the jabber barrels uh, downstairs, uh, are somewhat filling up. Especially the one for iron, I think is actually overflowing a little bit. Uh, yeah, this thing can only hold 20,000 iron and we have 28,000 in the AE system. So this thing is kind of way too small for what it needs to be and especially as we progress and start processing more and more stuff and getting more and more things which i would like to do i have plans to expand our mine factory reloaded laser drill system so that we're just getting a ton of ores consistently i don't even think these are being processed just yet no these are all still here and this thing's not even on right now so we gotta update that as well but basically what i want to do is i want to upgrade all of these barrels to deep storage units so for those who don't know deep storage units are basically like really 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 big barrels they can hold up to two billion with a b two billion of any particular item uh, however they are somewhat difficult to make so i'm actually going to go back to the last millennium to craft these because as of right now uh, all of our auto crafting stuff is in the last millennium as well and i would kind of like to be able to auto craft these because as i said they are a little tricky to make so deep storage unit <laughs> these guys over here and to make them, uh, some mod packs have different recipes. Sometimes they're like really easy to make, like crazy easy. Uh, in this pack, they've changed the recipe, so they're somewhat difficult, uh, requiring four sheets of plastic, four reinforced strong boxes, and one resident energy cell frame. So a bit of endorium thrown in there as well. You can also do it the end IO way, which requires reinforced obsidian, as well as a dimensional transceiver. We're going to go with the thermal expansion way for now, because we've kind of got a lot of this stuff uh, all ready to be auto crafted. But uh, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and auto craft the whole thing here. Yeah, so, first of all, we're going to need some more patterns, which apparently we do not have in our system. And also, we apparently do not have enough quartz glass. That is not fine, because also, apparently, we don't have enough certus quartz dust. We should probably set up some kind of system that allows us to constantly have a certain amount of certus quartz dust kept in our system. Is this got any upgrades in it? It doesn't. We should really also... Uh, we've got a resonant fluid transposer over here, but we don't have a resonant pulverizer. We should really work on one of those at some point as well. And also, this guy is still on a double layer capacitor uh, and not an octo layer capacitor, which is a bit of a shame because we could really do with it. Uh, anyway, for now, let's just go ahead and try and make these deep storage units. Let's make some more glass. And then let's make some more patterns, and then let's throw those in there. 14 should be more than enough to uh, to get all this stuff up and running. Apparently, we also have some uh, in here as well that are not being used. That's fine. Uh, okay, deep storage unit. We need to, first of all, automate the creation of plastic sheets, which are really easy to do. It's for raw plastic, like so. We can encode that very easily. Uh, but then the actual creation of raw plastic is made by smelting up either all different kinds of rubber in this mod pack. So basically, we have a ton of rubber bars, I think. We have a ton of rubber. <laughs> a ton of raw rubber. So what I should probably start with is teaching our system that raw rubber... I'll just call... Yeah, it's called raw rubber. Raw rubber equals normal rubber. We'll encode that and we'll stick that into the alloy smelter. Uh, it is set to... Ooh, it's set to alloys only. Did we put a normal... Do we not have a normal furnace over here? Really? We have no way to auto-craft our uh, smelting needs? What? 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 <laughs> okay. Well, in that case then... Let's, mm, that's going to be tricky because this one uh, is pretty much filled up there. You can see we're 8 out of 8 channels on our P2P network. So that's going to be a little tricky to handle. But what we could do is just not put it there for now. Let's have a look here. Redstone. We don't have a redstone furnace lying around. What is this? Okay, first thing we're going to do. We are going to make ourselves a resonant machine frame because I want this thing to be ridiculously fast. We're missing 10 redstone. Oh, yeah, okay. We're out of redstone. <laughs> and the reason for that is this guy over here. So we have currently <clears throat> 1.7 million. I think that is. Yeah, 1.7694 million destabilized redstone, which is uh, 1,769 buckets worth of destabilized redstone. Not really the best use of all of our redstone, but basically the system has kept going long enough to where we are now out of redstone. And uh, unlike with the uh, Enderman, well, we actually are getting more redstone from the quarries and stuff, but not really enough to sustain it. So for now, what I will do is I will just turn this off. We'll make sure that that side can no longer input redstone. 
Uh, thankfully, we did have some stored away in block form, and oh, you guys can get the heck out of there. Uh, do we have any? Oh, also, we need to upgrade our wireless range of this thing. Jeez, we've got so much stuff to do, guys. Uh, let's get some more torches, and let's just quickly go light up our new area so we don't get random blue creepers spawning all over the place. Uh, if we could just put you there and there, that should be fine. And then, do we have... I'm pretty sure we have a draconic sword lying around somewhere, right? We do not, but we can use our good old friend, the Obsidian Sword, here with uh, beheading and all that. And we can just kind of get rid of you. And then, oh, <laughs> okay. The uh, the portal might prove a little, uh... oh, oh, he came through with me. Okay. Oh, wow, we can actually just push mobs through. That's interesting. I'll have to bear that in mind. We could set up some kind of uh, cool system where we have mobs fall through a portal to their death. That'd be real weird, but we could do it, I guess. Uh, all right, get rid of you. Let's get a machine frame. Actually, first of all, we need to change redstone blocks into redstone. Like so. Then, is that still going? Where's that going? 6-4. It's being taken somewhere. Where the heck is that going? Oh, it's been put in here. Wait, what? Okay. <laughs> okay. There we go. That's, I'm just, I'll fix that at some other point, but for now, I cannot have our redstone just seeping out of the system slowly into the middle of nowhere. So, let's request a resonant machine frame, because I would like a resonant redstone furnace next and start. Hopefully, that won't take too long. Redstone furnace, I think the hardest bit in here is like bricks, which we might be able to make, which we can make. Oh, cool. We had enough bricks to make that happen. Cool stuff. Let's make two more copper gears. Let's make ourselves a reception coil. And then let's get ourselves nothing else? Yeah, now we just need to wait for this thing to finish, which I guess could take uh, a little bit of time. In the meantime, one thing we are going to need is another interface, or actually two interfaces, I think, in order to get everything I want to work working. Um, and for that, we're going to need a formation core or two, and then we'll take you, and then we need another one of these. Thank you very much. Boom. Boom. Nice. So the reason we need two is, of course, we need one for the redstone furnace that we're about to put down so that we can auto-craft smelting. And the next one is for our auto-crafting over here because as of right now, pretty much all of these are full up with the exception of this one, which has one slot left, uh, which we can actually go ahead and put the plastic sheets in there. Uh, the rest of them are all full, so we need some more slots. Thankfully, we can just go ahead and do that. And that adds an extra, like, I think it's eight or nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. An extra nine slots for us to put auto-crafting recipes in, which is pretty cool. We should probably also expand this, so we've just got a ton of those, and we never really run out. And also, there is a terminal that we can make that lets us access those. I think people pointed this out uh, at the end of last episode. Let me type in terminal here. Uh, and it's one of these. Is it the interface terminal? I think it is. Can we make that? We can. So basically what the interface terminal does is it allows us to see all of our ME interfaces and put stuff into the ME interfaces without having to go there. So we can see the one above the alloy smelter looks like this. It has two slots left. The extractor has a ton left. The fluid transposers have also a ton left. The inscribers back in the overworld have a ton left. And then we've got the ones in molecular assemblers. And you can see right now we have that one new line that we just put in. But basically what this allows us to do is put the recipes in without having to fly all the way down there and, and do it manually, which is pretty nice. It doesn't save that much time, but it does save time, which is kind of cool. So, redstone furnace. Let's get ourselves one of those. Done. And then, for now, because this is all filled up, we could put another um, P2P tunnel over here. Do we have one lying around in our system? I don't think that we do. Oh, we do. Okay. In that case, then, let's grab our memory card and let's try something different here so where hmm where do i want to put this let's let's break like the cable here let's get rid of this so currently that's not all that stuff there's not working this stuff over here is working fine that's only using two so let's grab our dense cable and then let's set up another kind of p2p -P tunnel up this way again we'll put it right there and then we'll have that connect up like so. We can put the redstone furnace somewhere like here, right smack bang in the middle. Because we are going to need, again, the um, the transfer node to send stuff back around to the interface. Like we have on our other stuff. Where did I put that last interface? Where did I put that last interface? <laughs> did we make two? Am I missing something? 
I'm fairly certain we made two interfaces. As to where they've gone, I have no idea. But for the sake of the episode, we'll make another one. We've got a ton of stuff. We can afford it. Let's take that and then let's put you there. And then all we need to do for this is, again, I will grab my memory card. Let's kind of hook this one up to, I believe it's this one here. Uh, that one's going, yeah, this one here. So let's go ahead and just shift right click on this one. Boom. Save settings. Let's load them on this one. Boom. Loaded settings. That shouldn't, I don't think, work yet. Although it seems like it might be working yet. I don't, um, I guess it might. I guess it might. Let's have a look here. I thought we might have had to do something with um, with the quartz fiber and getting power over there. But do we have one for the redstone furnace? Pulverizer? Yeah, redstone furnace. Okay. In that case, then, that's fine. Let's go ahead and throw you in there like so. Grab ourselves a quick transfer node uh, with one transfer pipe. And we should be pretty much good to autocraft this. So we'll stick you there. We will get something to block that off real quick. Uh, cover because that will just not work at all uh, Yeah, I'm not a fan of putting covers in randomly like this But we kind of have to have that there so it doesn't connect up I might try and fix that to make it look a little nicer in the future. Actually. Can we just hmm? Can I just like do this I Can and then I think I can do the same maybe down here <laughs> sure, okay, I, if, just if you right click enough with the wrench, it will eventually work, there you go, the more you know So, this is now working just fine, this guy does need some power, of course uh, Let's have a look, what do we have in terms of flux ducts, we have next to nothing in terms of flux ducts But thankfully, we can make a ton more thanks to the fact that this guy has no power as well <gasps> Oh, that's a pain, tesseracts, we do have four tesseract. are these frames? They are frames. We also have four normal tesseracts. So, for the brief few seconds... Actually, what? Oh, no, yeah, okay. For the brief few seconds that we need to do this, let's put this down there. Set that to frequency one. That should give this guy power. If I can get there. Yep, it does. It does cool stuff. And then that should be sending those, I guess, straight back to the A system. And then we can take those, and we can hook everything up with power, and everyone will be happy. Where is our drill? Because the drill is the best. Uh, let's hook you up like so, and then let's, oh, I keep falling, let's hook you up like so, nice, alright, let's get rid of the Tesseract, we'll throw that back in the AE system, no need for that to be there right now, also, we still need to put more range upgrades on, let's get rid of some of the junk that is sitting around in our inventory right now, don't need you, or you, or you, or you, we'll keep all of those, we'll just sort things out a little bit, there we go, that looks better. All right, cool. So we've got this working. We could do with the gravel road that I just probably threw into the AE system. Let's put you back down there. This guy is now getting power, which is good. We've got to make sure the top is an input, which it is. Make sure that's an output, which it is. So now if I was to request some rubber, we should actually get some. Start. Boom. It works. Nice. Now, the whole point of making it a resonant redstone furnace is that we can put some of the thermal expansion upgrades in it. So, we might as well go ahead. And actually, I think we still have some of these augments lying around. Yeah, because I made way too many the last time I did this. So, let's take just one of each of you. This should give us a super fast smeltery over here like that. And if we request another set of rubber, and if I can spell rubber, let's say like 10... And start, that should go, yeah, look at that. <laughs> that is just going ridiculously fast compared to the original one we had, which is absolutely fantastic. And finally, we can jump back around to the, the matter at hand, which is the deep storage units. So, what we're missing now for these is the rest of the auto-crafting. Let me change that to auto-search. I don't want any eyes synchronized. And then, let's take you. So, we need to teach it how to make all of the strong boxes. So we'll do that, encode you, that gets us the first one, we can then do the second one, let me just type in storage here, so it narrows down any eye a little bit. The second one is just that, an invar, and of course to do it we do need the first one, so let's put you in there, let's request a strong box. Next, start, there we go, done, let's try that again. I think our system already knows how to make hardened glass which is good. I don't know why I put that in there. 
Uh, let's take you back and throw that in there. And then we're going to need to request one so that we can make the next here. Start, start. That is done. Cool stuff. Do we have any hardened glass? We do. Let's teach it to encode that. Encode. Let's put that in over here as well. Boom. And then finally, all we need to do is teach it how to make the resonant energy cell frame. Now, I don't think it knows how to make any of this, but thankfully, it's all actually kind of easy to do. And again, we've got to put you in there. Do you see how helpful this uh, this interface terminal is? It makes things so much easier uh, in terms of going backwards and forwards and getting stuff. We'll start that. That one also, I don't think, should take that long. Um, it's crafting hardened glass, which it will be doing over here somewhere. Yeah, it's doing that in there. Good stuff. Uh, and then... The final thing we have to do, teach you how to make that, which does require at least one Endrium ingot, so we'll begin crafting that. Hopefully that won't take too long. We should probably go ahead and upgrade our systems. You were in there for whatever reason. Um, we should really upgrade our systems here. I'm not quite sure if it would be... I know we've already set it up for Endrium this way. I don't know if it'd be faster going through a resonant... Um, in induction furnace or if this is faster i'm not too sure we'll probably leave it like this for now because the end is already being made in the alloy smelter but uh, but we'll see we'll see in the future we could definitely do with upgrading the sag mill though to an octodic capacitor but for now again you should be done we will encode that we will put that in over there right next to everything else did i just like drop that somewhere or did that go in it went in cool and then finally we just need to teach it how to make everything else so frame Resident frame, next, start, make me one of those, please. We need four of the strong boxes, and we need at least one to make the crafting recipe, so we will start that as soon as the other one is done, which should be some point in the next 500 million years. The alloy smelter is just kind of still slow, though. This thing takes forever to get there, even with the octodic capacitor over there, which is a bit of a pain. I think a fully upgraded induction furnace might be a little bit faster, although I'm not 100% sure on how much faster it would be. That might be just me making stuff up. Uh, let's have a look here. Strong box. I keep putting STO for strong. <laughs> Apparently, I can't spell. Start. That one shouldn't take anywhere near as long because it's just the hardened glass that takes a while. Let me see if we have the same issue again with hardened glass. We do. Um, did I put the recipe in wrong there? A pulverized lead and one obsidian. I think that is wrong. Hardened glass how is that made it's four and one so let's change that recipe real quick because it's putting way too much in uh so we'll put it back to that do we have any hardened glass we do not <laughs> okay let's put that um where else is it making that then i don't mm, i don't know i took that out and it still had the ability of making it i'm not quite sure what went on there but that seems to be working so deep Storage, unit, boom, boom, encode, encode, and then we'll throw that in up here in one of the final slots we have there. And now we can go ahead and request deep storage units. Thankfully, they are made four at a time. We have about, I think, 15 of the uh, the things downstairs, so I will request, uh, I might as well request 16, because it's going to make 16 anyway. Next, we are missing obsidian and chests, apparently. So first of all, our system doesn't know how to make chests. What is that about? We will teach it that right away. And then Obsidian. I believe we were making Obsidian back in the overworld in our uh, thingamajig. That I've completely forgotten the name of. Uh, let's go back to home. And if I'm not mistaken, we had an English extruder. That's what it's called. It's been so long. Jeez. Since I've played with all the thermal expansion machines. You are making Obsidian, but... That is not hooked up to our AE system. So that is something I kind of need to bear in mind. Uh, between episodes, I should hook that up with some kind of storage bus. And I didn't mean to throw that all on the floor. I meant to throw that all into the AE system. And now, let's see. Deep storage units. 10, 16, next, start. That will be interesting to see. Now, it needs to make... 72 hardened glass. I have no idea how it's going to deal with that in terms of the AE system, but what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to sit here and kind of watch as the AE system tries to make this. Probably taking out some obsidian from the alloy smelter every so often if it gets hardened glass wrong. I'll be back in a second. 
And the little one led to we now have 16 deep storage units, which we can then go ahead and take down here. And basically what I'm going to do now is I've gone ahead and grabbed a dolly from the Jabba mod. We can go ahead and pick these up, which uh, does make you walk incredibly slow. I'm actually kind of okay with our uh, speed arm on it. But so we can go ahead, we can pick these up. I'm going to put them down right about there. And then I'm going to put its deep storage unit in its place. I'm then going to go ahead and throw down an item duct. This guy over here, the warp item duct, like so, which allows us to transfer items instantly as long as it's powered. So I also brought that test rack we were using earlier over, which I can then put here, which should power this guy as it's set to frequency one. I will then go ahead and make sure this has nothing to do with items, so the items don't go in there. And then we'll put a resonant server, which I just made using some of the enderium, into here. Because this allows us to pull as much iron as is possible out at a time. Set that to ignore. And that should start to pull that stuff out fairly quickly. If you look at Whale over at the top there. Uh, it's pulling out a stack at a time and sending it over. Uh, it is probably still going to take a little while. Because there is a ton of iron in there. 20,000 could take a little while to move over. But what I'm going to do guys again. I'm going to go away. I'm going to put down all of these. I'm going to replace all of these barrels with deep storage units. And try and move everything over. And I'll be back in a second. <laughs> And finally, quite a while later, we now have a full wall of deep storage units. Uh, it turns out that a transfer node with a stack upgrade in it was a little bit faster than these item ducts with the resonant server on it. So I went ahead and just replaced all of those with uh, transfer nodes and went through one by one and did all those. This one is still slowly working through there because we have a ton of bones in this flipping thing. It is ridiculous. 52,000 with another 5,000 left in here. But with that, guys, I'm going to end this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity there. I apologize for the massive long delay between last episode and this episode episode 75 should be up sometime very soon thanks for watching leave a comment down below on your way down there be sure to hit that like button it really does help out a lot and i will see you guys next time